Okay everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to bend light with your finger. So I was spurred to do this video from a comment in the comments section. Joseph Action said, hey Joseph Action, he has action in his name, how about that? He said, hey Action Lab, I need your help explaining a weird effect I discovered randomly when I was little. What I did was I held a finger in front of one eye, closed the other eye, then brought my finger close to my eye about three inches away or so, then I looked at the area where the edge of my finger meets the background image. And if I move my finger slowly, the background image seems to bend around the edge of my finger. How is this happening? Also, I tried to film it, but it didn't work on camera, only the naked eye. Please help me to understand what's happening. Well, I'm here for you, Joseph Action. So first, let's try to capture this effect that he's talking about here. I'm going to act like the camera is the eye, and I'm going to move my finger in front of it and try to bend the light from an image in the background. So let's see if I can capture it on camera. And in the last few days, I realized that all the explanations for why this works that I got before in my life were wrong. So today I'm going to explain to you how it really works and the wrong way to explain why it works. So let's see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be bending the light from this image here. So notice that when I have this image in focus and then I move my finger close to the camera and my finger's not in focus, it doesn't really do anything to the image. So if you try this and you have the background object completely in focus, nothing will really happen. But here's where the amazing thing happens. What you need to do is unfocus the background a little bit. So just get your eyes a little bit out of focus and that's where the bending light can occur. So you can see that when I push it, it looks like I'm bending the image here. How am I bending the frame from clear over here? It's like my finger is a lens. Look at that, that's crazy. And then if I defocus it the other direction, the light doesn't bend away from it, but it bends towards it. Okay, so first I'm going to explain the right way to explain how this works. So first, let's say that this is a black ball that we're looking at. And then over here is our lens. And this is either our eye or the camera, either one. And then this is the focus point of the lens. And then this is our retina. So what happens when light bounces off an object is it bounces off in all directions. So the light rays are coming off of the object and they're hitting it everywhere in between also. But what this lens does is it sends all of the light and focuses it down to one point here. So the lens refocuses it down to your focal point here. But what happens is we don't have this focal point on our retina. That's when we blur the background. So what you do on your eye is you blur it so it's not in focus, so the light isn't hitting your retina on the focal point, but it's a little in front of it. And same thing with the camera. I focused the camera so the focal point was a little bit in front of the sensor. And what happens is you don't see the image of this ball over here anymore. If you were at this point, you'd see the ball. But what happens is now the light keeps going through it and it's out of focus now. So now you kind of get this blurred image back here of a ball. So you can see how because we're not in the focal point, the ball got spread out and it's kind of blurred. So that's essentially just what a blurry image looks like. So now let's see what happens to this blurred image in the background when we have an object blocking it. So let's say I put a stick or a finger here and now it's blocking the view of some of the light coming off of this dot here. So this light still comes up and it gets refocused down to the focal point and down to here. This light though comes and it gets blocked, this gets blocked, this gets blocked. This makes it through, goes straight through. This comes up and gets focused down. So you can see that now the blurred ball in the background is only on this half here. So you can see now our blurred ball moved down here. 
and, and it got smaller, so it got focused a little bit. So because half of this lens is covered, instead of being spread out over this full area, which would happen if light rays were coming up here and it was in this area, it's now moved down to only this area. So by putting an object in front of the lens, just through the optics and the way the light rays are coming in, you shift down the image of the ball on your sensor here or your retina. And it did two things. The first thing it did is it focused the ball a little bit more. It didn't make it spread out as much. And also it focused where the center of the ball was. So it moved it down and focused it a little bit. And you can see that in the image with my finger. If you notice right around the edges of my finger when I was doing it with the picture, you can see right around the edges of my finger, it's focused a little bit. The image gets focused a little bit. Okay, so to recap, just so it's clear and I'm not going to use all the light rays or anything. So before you move your finger in front of the lens, you get a blurry image of a ball. And then after you move something in front of the lens, you get a blurry image of a ball that's shifted down a little bit. So when something's not blocking the lens, you get a blurry ball. When something is blocking it, you get a, sm you get a less blurry ball shifted down. And it's shifted down this way, but if I block the lens on this side, then it would be shifted up here. So this is the correct way to explain what's happening, but it's not technically bending the light, it's just blocking some of the light which makes it look like the image moves down. And the wrong way to explain it that I had been told my entire life is that it's due to diffraction. So even though diffraction is occurring around your finger, it's not enough to bend the light in the way that you're seeing. And also it doesn't account for the way that light can bend towards it or against it, depending on how you focus the background image. So let's say this is my object that's blocking the light. And then I have light coming in as waves. And when they hit the object, what happens when waves hit an object is the end of that object now acts like a point source of the waves. So instead of staying flat like that, it acts as if it's a tiny dot emitting waves around it. And so they're curved now. You can essentially see light coming from an object that never would have met your eye. And this is an actual phenomenon that occurs. But this effect in the situation with your finger is much too small to notice and doesn't account for the large shift in the image that you see. And the biggest kicker for the reason that diffraction is not the reason that you see light bend around your finger is the fact that depending on how you focus the background image, light can bend towards your finger or away from it. That wouldn't happen if it were purely diffraction. So if you want to try this at home, just remember to put your finger around three inches away from your eye and only keep one eye open. And then you have to defocus the background. So when you're looking at it, neither your finger nor the background image that you're looking at is quite in focus. They're a little bit out of focus. Your finger is the thing that's most out of focus, but the background image just has to be a little bit out of focus. And then as you move it across, you'll see exactly the same thing that I showed on the camera here. So I love questions like that that I got in the comments section. And the reason I love them is because I learned a ton from trying to answer it. I was going to initially just say it's happening due to diffraction, but I wanted to research it a little more and make sure I was sure on that. But in researching it, I found that diffraction actually doesn't quite make sense and it shouldn't be as big of an effect as you're seeing when you move the finger in front of your eye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And leave me any questions or comments you have in the comments section. I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time.